What up, Tubies? Here's your war boss Tay up in this mud. Today we're gonna be showing you how to do a war boss painting tutorial on the dark Eldar grotesque, which you can get in Fine Cast. Now I take you through the start of the process all the way through the end. All I did before this video was I just built him up, super glued him, and primed him, spray primed him. But I'm gonna teach you how to do all of these effects from the bruised, disgusting, protruding bone protrusions and metallics and bruising effect of the skin to these pipes and and drug injectors and these uh, ooh, these little pipes oozing green drugs and venom and pus um, everything in this video is there everything on this model all the effects on this model you will see in this video walk like an Egyptian and I am going to teach you how you can make your very own see this reminds me, I'm gonna go off on a tangent, but this right here, this spinal piece, all through while I was, I was painting it, I was like, what does this remind me of? This reminds me of something. And now that I'm looking at it, curled up and colored the way it is, it reminds me of um, a spine hugger? Face hugger, face hugger from Aliens. Yeah, so this guy is like a mix of the Cenobites from Hellraiser with definitely an homage to the Alien series there. So, hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for how to get this guy looking up to the standard. And thanks for watching. This video is a competition entry to Girl Painting 7,000 subscriber con competition. And it's also an entry into October's Spookytoberfest. Videos on models, tutorials, reviews, unboxing on models of a very creepy and spooky nature, so I thought this guy fit the bill very well. So thanks for watching, and let's get on with the War Boss tutorial. Alright, so let's get started painting our Dark Eldar Grotesque. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to spray prime your model. I decided to go with black because the mask and the pants are going to eventually be black, and I also did a black undercoat with my racks not too long ago so I decided just to keep with the black undercoat if you want you can go with white I think white will work just as well you're just gonna have to do a couple of extra steps like painting certain things black either again or first like these vials on his back are probably gonna benefit from going over again with black before you paint over the way we're going to end up doing it but I decided painting Spray, spraying it black will just take a couple of steps out of the out of the equation. So after you spray prime your model, you're going to paint all skin areas, including these creepy little baby hands on the back. You're gonna spray those with Deneps, or you're gonna paint those with Deneps stone with a brush, <laughs> unless you're really really good at airbrushing and you can get into all these little nooks and crannies and you have a really good airbrush which I do not. So again, that's any skin part you can find on the model. You're gonna paint with Denim Stone, which seems to be our color of the month here at War Boss Tay Studios. So I've painted all the skin models, or skin areas on the model with Denim Stone, which is this foundation paint. Now I'm gonna go over all of the skin areas on the model with Ogre and Flesh. And that is going to get into all the recesses and pick out all the detail. And it's one of my favorite washes to use with Deneb Stone when painting anything that is alien or undead with this pale color scheme. As you can also see, I've also picked out the detail in black before doing the wash. Picked out details such as the outlets in his shoulders and the wires, cords and cables that are feeding into his body just so that it would be nice and clean when we put the ogre and flesh wash over. So I'm gonna go and paint the wash on now and we'll show you what that looks like when we get back. So after letting the wash dry, while the wash was drying, I painted the metallics, which were all his metal arm, most of his metal arm, the bases of most of the vials. So as you can see here, anything that's gonna be a vial or holding some some of that green liquid or any of the metal studs and bits. This is going to be the hardest part 
just picking out the metal staples all over the different areas of the model and trying to find those. So after doing that, the wash was just about dry, so I applied a second wash, this one a little bit lighter, and this one just focusing on the darker areas where shadows would naturally hit. The first wash is just to give depth and shadow to the model. The second wash is to really deepen and darken the, the areas of the model where shadows would naturally fall in, like in here, underneath the arms. If you're using the this liquefier gun, there are a lot of bony protrusions in the arms that we're going to be painting up later and inside those areas where the bones are jutting out that would be a great place to wash again a second time into the deeper, darkest, darker shadows and recesses of the spinal cord and the column. Basically anywhere that is going to require a deeper shadow. And then I painted a gold rim around the helmet to match the racks. And what we're going to do now is we're going to paint, we're going to wash all of the metal with Bada Black. And while that's drying, we're going to get to work on the green areas, the wires and the vials. So while you're washing with Bada Black, I'm going to do that and I'll see you back in a second to show you what those are going to be, those green liquid vial things. Next you're going to take your Dark Angels Green and, sorry if I can steady my camera with my one hand, you're going to be painting all of the tubes and vials with green liquid. And what I tried to do was I tried to imagine that this is sometime halfway through the battle so some of these drugs would already have been injected into his body so some of these vials might almost be empty while others might be full or others only half full and if you take into account how the, the model is, what the gravity is, then you will put the, the green a little bit closer to the base of whatever vial that you're using. And I think this is a great interesting dynamic on a model that has so many of these drug injector vials all over his body, where you can make some of them almost completely empty, some of them half full, some of them full. The tubes are always going to be running with these drugs and with this um, venom and poison or toxin or whatever. So, oh, I forgot to paint. You're also going to have to paint inside the vial here. I think I was waiting for the bad at black to dry, as well as the vial in the back of the gun. Okay, so once you're done with that, the bad at black on all the metal has, has dried. The, the Dark Angel's green has dried. You're going to layer over the Dark Angel's green with snot green, which is a little bit lighter, and... It has almost a luminescent glow when you when you thin it down with some water and then you add it to the Dark Angel's green and then just thin it down and use it by itself. This color is going to make a great cloudy, luminescent, glowing effect for your model for all, all of the drugs and all the poisons throughout the tubes. So I'm going to go do that and then I'll, we'll go on to the next step after that which is going to be the pants. Uh, on the model and after that we're going to be just about done minus a few other details. So what I did now was that I painted scorched brown onto the pants and you are not painting the knee pads, these thigh drug injector slash patches or the armor plates on the front of this corset that he's wearing but you are going to paint the the leathery part of the corset and when you are done painting the brown areas you're going to wash it with bad dab black you're also going to paint onto the snot green of focus focus of the tubes and the wires you're going to paint over those with a very light application of goblin green and then you're going to wash over it with either thacker, thraka green wash or a watered down glaze of Dark Angel's Green, and that's going to give it a really luminescent, glowing effect with a lot of dimensions to it. Okay, so I'm going to go wash the slacks here with Bad Dad Black and this one tube that I forgot to hit with the green wash, and then we're going to go on to the bruising and the details of the skin, and then we should be just about done with our grotesque model. 
So what we've done now is taken our Deneb stone and we've highlighted again, especially these bony protrusions and these little baby arms and baby claws on the back. And as you can see, if you dry brush it, it creates a pretty good effect, but you're gonna need to also go in for these bony protrusions out of the right arm. You're really gonna need to take your time with, but it creates this really great sickly pallid effect which we're going to shade even further and also if I hadn't mentioned you're going to also take some art coat gloss varnish and paint up the tubes and the vials it's gonna give them a very glassy appearance and that's also gonna be really really good and just add to the overall feel of it what once you're done with the dry brushing up the first dark red purplish wash you're going to use is a little bit of ball red and leviathan purple together into areas where there would be a lot of heavy bruising like here where the bony protrusions are popping out of the arm I've also dotted them with skull white so they would stick out a little bit further you're gonna paint the base of these little bony protrusions with leviathan purple and ball red washes you're also gonna use those washes and paint in the recesses and the creases of the spine but you're not going to go too crazy because this is a larger model with a larger surface area you want to pick and choose where you want the purpling bruises to be and the red bruises to be and also just for fun you're going to find places to put in a dark thraka green wash and what the wash the green wash is going to do is it's going to show where the drugs are flowing like directly under the top layer of the surface of the skin but with the other bruises, it's just going to show the, the body's metabolism trying to fight off and, and integrate with the drugs being injected into it. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you what the result I have achieved is just in a second. I just wanted to show you what it looks like with a dry brush denim stone. A little bit of a highlight of skull white onto where the bones are protruding directly from the skin. As well as the art coat gloss varnish on all of the tubes and piping. So I painted in the purple and the reds deep into all these bruised and folded areas of skin where I feel like bruising would happen. Also right here where this implant on the chest is. I also put in purple on the borders of like the gloves to show where it was kind of melded to the flesh. And then what I did, which I found was interesting, is the first time I used this technique was I painted Deneb stone really lightly and then I put it over here, the left arm is where I mainly did this effect, and then I did a really thin glaze of Thraka green, but what I added were, were a couple of lines of Dark Angels green to it, so it gives us this pallid, really pale skin tone, but it gives you these the effect of veins underneath because it's a glaze it keeps it wet so it keeps this shining shimmery look but you also get the effect of veins which are pumping this green poison just barely under the surface of the skin let me see if I can get it without the, the shine there you can kind of see it underneath the it looks like there there are veins under the the top surface of the skin and I think for this side it, it's really effective because there's a lot of surface area for the skin it's really smooth for the most part. Just the bicep, the shoulder muscles, you know, it doesn't have folds and flaps of flesh or these bony protrusions sticking out and you can really create that effect. So again, what I did was I painted Deneb Stone, a thin layer, and then I watered down some Thraka Green and I added in just a tiny little bit of Dark Angels Green to it. And what the Dark Angels Green does is when all the pigments separate in the, the wash, the Thraka Green Wash, they come out as really thin little lines which give you the effect of veins and I think that is such an awesome, awesome thing. Okay, I also added in purple and red washes to the spine. So it looks really bruised and gross and disgusting. I also painted purple or reds to the majority of where these drug injectors are to show kind of where they were forcefully just shot into the skin. Also, oh, there are these two little open piping things right here on 
sorry, right here under the left arm. And for those, I painted some purples around the edges. I also painted some thin down snot green and some thin down vomit brown, which when they mix together and they're added together, they it still retains a lot of the green, but it also has a shiny, luminescent, yellowy, pus-like quality to make it appear like there's pus and mixing with the poison and the drugs that are dripping out of the pipes. So, totally gross. Um, I, I did my snow effect to the base. I, I've changed my snow effect a little bit to make it not as n not as permanent with the uh, super glue I found mixing the super glue in with the snow basing it's it's really quite permanent and it doesn't always give you the slushy effect so so this is a new type of slushy snow effect that I've created using some GW water effects do we have any around here here we go <clears throat> GW water effects and any kind of snow but the type that I'm using for this kind is Gale Force 9 Hobby Scenics filled to the rim, so I just used a little bit, mixed it together in a spare tray, uh, a spare clamshell tray, and there you go, you get a very slushy, wet looking snow. I'm gonna get it out of here so no black dirt or dark colored dirt will get into it, so it retains this slushy, pure, pristine kind of look to it. And there you have it, players. I hope you've enjoyed this. War Boss tutorial. The only other things that I did were I, I highlighted up again the met metallics because it looked kind of dark with a bad at black wash over everything. So I brought up certain joints on the fingers, which you could do with Mithril Silver or Bolt Gun Metal again. And really, that was all I really did. I, I painted and I picked out the studs on the, the body armor piece, I guess. And yeah, that was it. So Hopefully you enjoyed this War Boss painting tutorial on how to paint a dark Eldar grotesque. Coming up next, I've got this guy. So stay tuned for him, he should be here by the end of the weekend. I'm still working out how I'm going to do each of the little pieces on this model, but for now I hope you've enjoyed this War Boss painting tutorial on how to paint the new fine cast dark Eldar grotesque. And again, this is a contest entry for Girl Painting 7,000 Subscribers competition. Hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.